Coming up this morning on Daybreak, candidates debate over the topic of clean Missouri, what key points these politicians are bringing up. And we'll take a look at what type of challenges the foster care system is facing during this global pandemic. It is six o'clock bright and early for you on this Monday morning, July 13th. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Heather Lewis, Joe and Jen both have the morning off. Another change for you, meteorologist Jamie Warner is up first today with your forecast first. It is looking good on this Monday morning, feeling good too. You know, temperatures outside right now, a little cooler than we've seen here over the last recent stretch of time where it's been so hot. Driving into work this morning, not an issue. Roads are dry. It'll be dry at lunchtime and it'll be dry when you're heading home later today. Uh, temperatures also are gonna be pretty nice this morning. Get out there if you have any outdoor chores early today. Temperatures, while they're pleasant, they'll warm up fast and under mostly sunny skies. Look for afternoon highs around 93. We've got a heat wave to talk about and I'll have more on that coming up. All right, new this morning for you. Two candidates running for a local house district are debating the topic of clean Missouri. This is something that has been a big topic for debate in uh, this political race here. So Colorton's Madison Heaver is here with more on what key points these local politicians brought to the table to a debate on Thursday. Madison, what do they have to say? Yeah, Heather, Clean Missouri is a state constitutional amendment that Missouri voters approved back in 2018. And one of the biggest reasons it's being sent back to the voters to be voted out is because of the nonpartisan state demographer position that it creates. I think it's a dry subject, but an important one. One of the concerns Republicans had with Clean Missouri was the establishment of a nonpartisan state demographer to draw district lines. You and I both know that, especially right now, there is no such thing as nonpartisan. However, this gets about as close as what we can. And if the Republican named Cleaner Missouri were to go into effect, district lines would then be drawn by a bipartisan commission from both chambers in the Capitol. Instead of pretending like that doesn't exist, let's embrace the fact that we have leanings and instead push for something more fair. In 2018, we had candidates, we had members of both parties back Clean Missouri. It was passed by 62% of the state and 60% of the folks in Western Green County, where Bishop and I are both hoping to represent. Because of that, Democrats believe Republicans are attempting to overturn the will of the voters. Which is a, a phrase you'll hear a lot by those who are against cleaner Missouri. I would argue that that 60%, that out here in Western Green County, that there was not clear instructions on what exactly this bill did. Some who attended the debate were impressed with both candidates. I thought the debate was pretty well argued from both sides. They both come across as knowing their stance and their side of what they're talking about. They're both very knowledgeable and very articulate. We're, we're lucky enough district to have a pretty articulate two individuals, one, both on the Democratic and Republican side. I think that it, it, it changes the playing field. It completely changes the way um, uh, that we operate as a political system. Even in particular, the redistricting, there are so many facets of that decision and so many people that are impacted in such a big way that I think it does take careful study. You can expect to see the Republican-backed Clean Missouri Amendment back on your ballot in November, and the next election is the August 4th primary. Madison Heaver for us this morning. Thank you. Putting crime into focus now, Nixa police are investigating the death of a married couple from gunshot wounds. This happened Saturday afternoon. According to police, 64-year-old Patricia Lepper and her husband, 66-year-old Terry Lepper, were found in an apartment off Fairway Avenue. That investigation is ongoing, but it has been determined this is an isolated incident. There is no danger to the public. One person has serious injuries after a shooting in Springfield. Police say that suspect is still at large. Springfield police are looking for a man in his mid-30s connected to the shooting. This all took place at Orchard Park Apartments on North Crest Haven. That's near Interstate 44 and West Bypass. It happened yesterday. Police say the suspect was inside an apartment looking for the victim. When the victim arrived, the suspect shot him in the leg and then left. During the investigation, officers located what they believed to be a pipe bomb. They evacuated that side of the complex and destroyed the item. Well, taking a look at our coronavirus coverage, important decisions that could change Springfield residents. Daily outings are being made tonight 
at the Springfield City Council meeting. The big one is the mask ordinance mandating everyone to wear a mask while in public. The effective date for that mask ordinance would be July 16th. That could change depending on what's decided tonight. Masking face covering option will be an additional tool that we can deploy uh, in our community to slow the spread while we continue to um, reopen our, our economy. The addition of the face uh, covering requirement will help us from having to step backwards and have to close down the economy more. Katie Towns with the Health Department and Cora Scott with the City of Springfield says masking is an effort to slow the spread of COVID-19. Places across the country where um, masking has been required, they've seen their case counts um, go from r a rising trend to then declining. Just like seat belts, um, some argue that masks are uncomfortable. However, there is no doubt that both can save lives. Towns explains how masks work in a community. Masking is really a mechanism to uh, protect others. So when I wear a mask, I'm protecting you. All of the things that we're recommending really come from um, a fact-based tested approach. This is an opportunity for our entire community to embrace the power we all have individually to help prevent needless suffering and death. And it's a simple act of putting on a mask. Scott tells me what the masking rule would be. It's to require people to wear these face coverings when they're in um, spaces where there's other people, when, when you're in public areas. Um, if you're not in a public area, you won't be required to wear these. And explains how the rule will be enforced if the ordinance passes. We're hoping that people see it as just the right thing to do. You're not going to see police officers necessarily arresting people on the street for not wearing a mask. But we do have penalties in place that you can get ticketed. It could be a $100 fine. And another item on the agenda, the health department is seeking approval to use their fund balance to cover the cost of bringing additional staff on board. We will be pursuing uh, hiring a, an additional 37 people to equip us to handle this response. We need additional capacity to help us with um, those interviews and that process by which we contact everybody that has been exposed and then put them into um, a situation where we're asking them to quarantine and resist exposing other individuals. That was our Francis Lynn reporting. There are Facebook groups that have made plans to protest tonight's vote on that masking ordinance. But before the city makes its decision, it will listen to public comments, and that could take a while. There are 102 speakers signed up to talk at the meeting tonight. 84 will speak on the masking topic. 29 of those are in support of a masking order. 55 in opposition and 18 are for other topics. Those commenting on masking will be given three minutes each to do so. To see more statistics on how many people submitted comment forms and left voicemails for the city, you can find this story on our website at ozarksfirst.com, also on your Colorton News app. The Springfield Green County Health Department has announced six new COVID cases and additional possible community exposures. That full list of dates, locations can be found on our website as well, ozarksfirst.com. We're having to adapt and things could change tomorrow. They could, you know, for the negative, they could be for the positive. So. This morning, we take a look at how COVID-19 is impacting foster care and the challenges the foster care system is facing during the pandemic. Presbyterian Children's Homes and Services works to place children in foster homes and then reunify them with their biological parents, if possible. And we were um, asking questions on how we're going to assure safety of children, um, how we're going to offer services to parents, um, and, and just how the whole overall process is going to look like, because a lot of our contact is obviously face-to-face -face contact. As a result of the virus, the agency has now moved to virtual meetings, something Jeremy Elliott, a case manager, says can be difficult on younger foster children. He says they've seen a number of reluctant foster parents to house a child, especially when this virus first started to spread. If there aren't any willing foster parents in the area, sometimes the agency is forced to place a child in a home outside of the area, which makes it difficult to reunify them with their biological parents. Elliot says even though they've run into some bumps along the way, operations are almost back to normal with a few restrictions. 
Making news around the Ozarks, the Springfield NAACP is hosting voter registration drives for students. One will happen tonight at Central High School from 6 to 8. This is video from yesterday's event helping students who will be 18 years old on or before November 2nd register to vote. Adults who are already registered are also available to update or also able, I should say, to update their voter registration and get help with name or address changes. The dream is kind of to do it throughout the summer. Uh, right now, the, the plan was to coordinate with the district and work with all six locations, the high school locations, um, and cycle those throughout the summer as time and energy kind of permits. The completed registration forms are given to a voter register to be delivered to the county clerk's office. A drive-by birthday parade to honor a World War II and Korean War veteran happened over the weekend in Arkansas. Here's a look at that story. <laughs> Today is a very special day. It's a very rare day. Uh, it's not many occasions that we get to celebrate this magnitude of, uh, of celebrations here. How old are you today? 100 today. He's a World War II veteran and a Korean War veteran. And just to, uh, you know, put some things in perspective, he's a Tuskegee Airman uh, mechanic. So he, he's, he's there in that area. So that's, like I said, you know, you just don't get this every day. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to make plenty of noise. <laughs> he is a hero in Arkansas, in the United States. He can still do just about anything any of us can do. But the 100 years old, I mean, it's a national treasure that, you know, we just can't see every day. And for us to have that, that's a true blessing. So we have invited uh, Jefferson County uh, dignitaries, the city of Pine Bluff dignitaries, as well as the city of Whitehall dignitaries, and some of Mr. Vaughn's former pastors. There's so many people. People, you know, he's a man of service, and he's been doing it all his whole life. What do you think of the, the birthday parade? Oh, I just overheard. I tell you, I didn't believe it. I didn't know so many people was concerned enough to come out and celebrate with him. He is really noteworthy of all of this honor. Even to this day, you always say, I'm just blessed to be able to do something for someone else. Boy, he looks pretty good for 100, too, doesn't he? Happy birthday to him. Well, make sure to stay with us. It is 612 on your clock on this Monday morning. Here's a look at I-44 heading towards 65 on our live drive. The skies are clear, a few clouds up in the air, but boy, it is going to warm up fast today. Jamie Warner is up next to let us know how the humidity will play a factor in today's forecast. Keep it here.